In this video, we're going to be talking about how to replace an electrical outlet. And as always, I'll have timestamps in the description below so you can go ahead and jump to whatever part of the video you're most curious about. Just to quickly touch on why you might be changing out some outlets or why you might want to, you might want to do it because you have some that are older in your home that might have changed colors over time. I have some of those myself and I'll put a picture on the screen to show that but some of my outlets have actually turned kind of like a dingy brown color. So I do wanna change out some of those to actually have them look white and crisp. But the one that I'm changing out today actually does not work consistently. Uh, one plug does work, but the other one did not. Uh, so I wanted to go ahead and change the outlet out to see if it was in fact an outlet problem or if it was a wiring problem. And after changing out my plug, it seems to be working consistently. So I've kind of self-diagnosed that it was a plug problem and not a wiring problem. But all that to say, if you go and you replace an outlet and you're 100% sure you did everything right and it's still not working, I would definitely say at that point, consult an electrician because you might have a larger wiring problem on your hands that needs to be solved. And there's no YouTube video I can make to help every single person with wiring problems. So the tools you'll need are either a pair of wire cutters or a pair of needle nose pliers. The wire cutters and the yellow are a lot easier to work with. You also need a box cutter to cut around any sort of paint that might be around your cover or around the outlet itself. Right here I have some testers that I'm showing you. This is an actual tester that you can use to see if your outlet has power. Uh, this is a simple frozen light for my kids that I'll be using in this example. You can really use anything. Uh, you also will need some screwdrivers. You can make anything work with a flathead screwdriver. You might want a Phillips head screwdriver for convenience, but definitely you want a flathead screwdriver. And last but not least, you'll need an outlet itself so that you can replace it. Uh, you can reuse the existing cover or you can buy a new cover to match uh, the new outlet that you're putting in. So let's take a trip to our breaker box and turn off power to the circuit we'll be working on. You can make sure that you've done that by going ahead and plugging a light into your outlet to make sure that it is in fact dead. So what you're going to do now is you're going to take a box cutter if you see any paint around that cover and cut that paint to make sure it's not going to hold that cover on. And then go ahead and take a flathead screwdriver and remove that screw that will be holding that cover plate on. So once you've done that, you're going to go back to your box cutter and then you're going to go around your outlet to cut off any sort of excess paint that might be holding it onto the wall. So sometimes when you're painting, you'll actually will take the, your decorative cover off of the outlet, but the outlet itself would remain on the wall when you're painting. And if you are using really good latex paint, it will actually uh, bond your outlet to the wall at those points that I'm cutting with a box cutter. So go ahead and cut that off and then take a Phillips head screwdriver uh, in my case, I tried a Phillips head and it wasn't working. So I went back to my flathead screwdriver, but take a flathead screwdriver and go ahead and back out those screws that are holding that outlet to the box. And you'll see here that as we're backing these screws out, uh, eventually we'll be able to pull that outlet right out since we've backed the screws out and also cut uh, the latex paint that was holding it on. I would recommend taking a picture of the outlet and the wires that are attached to it once you get this out of the wall because in the event you have a house with funny wiring you want to know how this uh, outlet was wired before so you can get it back the way it was so in my case i'm going to use my wire cutters you can see my south wire wire cutters that i absolutely love and for some of these wires, I am going to just cut them off instead of trying to back the screws out or loosen their connections. You can see that they're actually pushed into the outlet. So I'm just going through, I'm cutting those off. Uh, for that copper ground wire, I am going to show you how I would get that off. Just as an example, I would use a Phillips head screwdriver, go ahead and, and just loosen that screw and then go back to my wire uh, pliers, wire cutters, and go ahead and just bend that wire out so that it comes right off. So once I've done that, I have kind of a trophy. I have my uh, out existing outlet and I can use that if I need to, to know which wires went in which positions. So I'm gonna go through and since I've elected to cut these wires out, I'm gonna use my uh, wire strippers and go ahead and get some new connections made or, uh, or available, I should say. So I'm gonna take some of this insulation off. I can just fit it right in the grooves on those pliers and just pull that insulation right off. Uh, I will tell you that it's definitely easier to take uh, insulation 
off than it is to put it back on. So go ahead and take off as much as you think you might need, but be a little conservative with it and leave uh, some of the insulation on the wire. And if you end up needing more, you can always take more of that insulation off as you go along. So I've made up all my connections, I've cut them off. You can see on the back of the switch I'll be installing, or the back of the outlet rather, it actually gives you a breakdown of which wires need to go where. So that's definitely helpful if you're trying to figure out where to put these different wires. So I'm here I'm attaching the copper ground back to the switch. You can see that I'm simply bending the copper ground around that screw. And off camera, I will tighten that screw to make sure that it's a good connection. But you can see that by doing that, I can now get my switch to be the right way up. So different people have different feelings about the push-in connections. I actually really like them, so I went ahead and did push-in connections back with the outlet I was putting in. You'll see here is a great example. You can know if a push connection is not good because if you push in the wire and then it pulls right out just like that, that connection is not good enough. So what you need to do is go ahead and cut off some more of that insulation and then you'll be able to go ahead and push that wire in and it should lock into the outlet at that point if it's if it's far enough in what you'll notice if you ever look at the back of an outlet like this is there is a way to release those push connections you can get a small screwdriver and stick it in there to release those but i've always struggled with getting that to work um, but here i've gone back to my old outlet i've looked at the wiring configurations for the power and for that red wire so i'm going to go ahead i'm going to actually push those in I'll push in the one red wire and I'll push in the black wire and I will actually loop uh, the other black wire onto the outlet like it was on the outlet that I just took out. So you can see here, I'm just doing a quick pull test to make sure that those are going to stay in. And now I'm actually going to bend my black wire to hook onto my, um, onto my screw on the outlet itself. So I made a quick little bend there with my pliers and then I'm just going to loop it on and then I'm going to tighten the screw and use those pliers to tighten that loop up a little bit. And once I do that, I should be able to go ahead and push this outlet back into the wall uh, and start tightening the screws. At this point, most of the heavy lifting should be done. All you have to do is put those screws back into the holes in the actual outlet box itself. You're going to hand tighten those. That's what I would recommend. One of the things also that I would recommend is that you tighten the first screw in, not all the way tight, and then you go ahead and you drop down to the second screw and you get that one semi-tight, but by not tightening these screws all the way, you have some flexibility on aligning that plug how it needs to be. If it's not straight up and down, by not tightening the screws all the way, you can you know move that plug with your hands and then you can actually go ahead and tighten those screws so that it's fixed in the right spot. So what I'm doing here is I'm actually going in with my flathead screwdriver now, and I'm just going to get these screws even tighter. I decided to go ahead and actually put a new cover on top of my new outlet. So I went and got uh, some new covers. I just took it out of the packaging like that. It came with its own screw and using the flathead screwdriver, I just simply tightened that screw up to get that cover firmly on the outlet itself. So you might have wanted to test the, the outlet before this to make sure it works, but I'm fairly confident it's going to. So I go back down, flip my breaker, check both outlets, and just like that, it's finished. So that's the video, and I hope that it has answered some questions that you might have had about changing an outlet or maybe calm some fears that you had as well. So as always, you know, my lame ploy, if you want to like and subscribe to the video, I'm personally not going to stop you. And I'll put out more content every week to help cover some more DIY projects around my home that I'm tackling that I'm sure that you've run into as well or might be thinking about. So as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.